Hi all, fans of Derrick and Verdi 3. Today I've got a real good special one for you today. And I'll tell you what, no one makes them quite like this. So this is the recipe for you. If you like sausage rolls, then no one makes them as good as Jan does. And now she's going to show you to make them today. You may have tasted others before, but follow this recipe. This is the one and you will love the outcome. Okay, just watch this. Well, how can I follow that? Let's hope they turn out all right. Okay, now the way I make my pastry is the way a lot of um, chefs make their pastry is half fat to flour. So I'm going to do some sausage rolls today and I've already measured out eight ounces of flour. You use plain flour, I usually use McDougal's, but you don't have to. I mean, you know, that they're all pretty much of a muchness. And the important thing is when you've got your flour is to sift it into the bowl. So sift it high because you want to try and get that air in and make it nice and fine. You don't use self-raising because you actually don't want it to rise because you're making pastry. So you're going to sift this in here so you don't get any lumps. And there you are. Now, I then use half fat to, to the flour. So if I've used eight ounces of flour, I use four, four ounces of fat. But I don't just use fat, I use stalk as well. So I halve that again. So four ounces of fat becomes two ounces of, I use Trex, you can use cooking, any ones that you want, and two ounces of stalk. So you can see here, I've got two ounces of stalk and two ounces of the Trex. And then they are now going to go in. The key to making good pastry is to have cold hands. So you want to get on with this as soon as you get your ingredients out of the fridge. All right. Now they really do. Use a knife, cold knife, and you want to mix this in. So you're mixing your fat into your flour. And you've just got to keep on doing this for a little while until you've got really small pieces of fat that you've mixed in. So we've mixed this up, we cut it up quite small. At this point I'm actually going to go away from it, I'm going to run my hands under the cold tap and make sure they're really really cold because that's your best trick for making your pastry. Obviously you want to make sure they're dry and nice and cold and then you're going to start crumbling it together so you're now trying to crumble that fat into the flour without it all sticking and getting hot so so this is the part where it's crucial you've got cold hands so you can see it's beginning to resemble fry, fine bread crumbs now if you want to make sure there's no more fatty bits that need to be mixed in if you sift through the bigger pieces will come to the, whoops, to the top of your bowl and you can see there we've got some bits that just need to be mixed in but it's beginning to feel warm in my hands so I'm going to call it a day soon. Right, right I've made a little well in the middle. <coughs> I've just run the cold tap for a few minutes just to make sure I've got cold water and I'm just going to put a little bit in, not too much, don't go mad at this point and you're gradually going to try and bind that together. If I was making an apple crumble, that would be the consistency I would have it. So I would just sprinkle that over my apples and sprinkle it with some sugar. But we're not, we're making sausage rolls today, so I want a little tiny bit more. Don't go mad with the water, because you cannot take it back out. It should begin to stick together soon. You can see it beginning to clump. now this is a trial and error there's no real measure with the water just not much and you can see it's beginning to come together now make sure your hands are cold and then begin to stick it together now I don't overwork the pastry some people they take it out on the side and they need it at this point I don't because I don't want to overhandle it so I literally just squeeze it together. I can see that's going to go a little bit crumbly, 
but going to be delightful. So that is all I'm doing with that there. And now I'm going to wrap it in some foil. And I'm going to pop it into the fridge for one hour until it's cooled down. That's in the fridge for an hour. While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to make a start on the sausage meat. Now, a lovely accompaniment to sausage meat is if you were to have some sage and onion stuffing, mix it up with your boiling water, pop it into a dish, and then add your sausage meat and mix it all in. It makes the sausage meat absolutely fantastic. However, today, I realised I didn't have any sage and onion stuffing. So as I've started, I'm going to carry on and I want to get this finished. So I've sprinkled some flour, got my sausage meat, I'm going to roll it into the sausage roll sizes I want. I quite like them small, I don't like them too big and bulky. And then that's sitting there ready. I'm going to cover that, pop that in the fridge as well. So it's all ready to go for when the pastry comes out of the fridge. Right, your pastry needs to be cold, but if you haven't got a lot of time, and popping it in the fridge is going to take too long. So you really do need to leave it for an hour in the fridge. Um, you can shortcut the system and pop it in your freezer for about 10-15 minutes. But don't forget about it because you don't want it to freeze over. But that's just to get it cold really quickly. The um, sausage meat I've used is also fresh sausage meat because I intend to freeze some of these down once I've made them. So here's my pastry. I've taken it out, I'm going to split it in half just because I don't like to work with anything too big. And again, I'm not going to knead or do any of that, I'm just going to bind it together. It's lovely and cold, I can feel it's cold in the middle. Don't overwork it. Okay, pop it on there. Not too much. It is crumbling, so it's going to be crumbly. It could maybe have done with a tad more water, but it's going to taste glorious. So you just rolling this out. Now the key to this is to roll it so that you put even pressure on your rolling pin and you're evenly distributing the weight right across. If it starts to do that obviously then you need a little bit more flour. Alright you can put a little bit on your, okay, your rolling pin and gently ease it out but you don't want to you don't want to um, put uneven pressure you don't want to make it too thin, you want to make it quite thin because you don't want too thick pastry around your sausage rolls. So I'm just going to keep easing that out very gently. Right, I'm going to turn this around. You can see it's quite, quite firm actually because that's all sticking together nicely. I've turned it around. I don't turn the pastry over when I make it. Uh, just see it's beginning to split now so that is the point now I'm going to stop and it's about about a couple of millimetres thick okay. okay so we're just making sure it's not sticking it's slightly thicker there I'm not happy about that so I'm just going to ease that out a little bit but I do want a relatively straight line so you just straighten up your edges, chuck it over there. I try not to, re I might bind it together in a minute and reuse it once, but the best pastry is the pastry you have only used once. Here's my sausage meat. Gently roll that over. Just gently catching it there. Milk, I use milk. Some people glaze with um, egg and milk. Some people put salt in with the pastry mix but I don't I find the salt makes it heavy this is the way I do it you can feel it's light and then I'm just going to take that down there and that is ready now just to pop the little air holes in just glaze with some Milk. I um, glaze it with the milk even if I'm going to freeze it down because I find that it keeps it nice and moist and also so I forget, tend to forget when I get it out and pop it in the oven that I have um, need to glaze it. So, nice sharp knife. Cut them as size you want but we, we quite like them 
about this size. So tidy the ends up, make them look nice. And they are now ready to go on my baking tray here. They're for the freezer, that baking tray. This baking tray is all ready to go into the halogen oven to cook. So I'm now going to pop these into the halogen oven. It's already warmed up, so mind you don't catch your hands. I warm it up just now. Pop it back on about 20 minutes, about 180 degrees. Right, what I've done here, these are ready to go in the freezer, so they're all they're all ready to uh, go in there. I've turned this up to 200 for the last few minutes because I wanted to brown them off and they're looking good. So I'm going to take them out in a minute and uh, I'll just taste them. Wait.